You're watching the new home for live Grizzly Athletics on the Grizzly Digital Network. We would like to thank our corporate sponsors who have made today's game possible. For more information, log on to grizzlyathletics.com. Now, here's voice of the Grizzlies, Matt Mahoney. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Grizzlies Live in Nuke City. I'm your host, as always, Matt Mahoney, and today uh, we've got a great episode for you here, and we're going to start things off with our head men's soccer coach, Steve DeCoup. Coach, how are we doing? We're doing great. How are you, man? Today's going to be a good morning based on last night's effort, correct? Yeah, I mean, we try not to let a result dictate you know, how happy or sad we're going to be, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> when you put eight past a team, the offense, you know, has uh, historic uh, outburst. You know, yeah. it, was, it was a good night. So. Toomsie said it last time on the broadcast. Almost every forward put one in the back of the net. Got to be. Ha I mean, that's exactly what you practice for. Is those guys to score. Yeah, exactly. The, the only one we wanted to get a goal was Martin, but I guess he's just saving those for conference. Uh, Fine by me. But like you said, uh, on the broadcast last night, I saw it. It was you know some guys hadn't scored in weeks, yeah. months. Yeah. And so, you know, for Jamie and Ibra and Sammy to, to get a goal, you know, uh, with strikers, it's all about confidence. And yeah. so to get that goal, get their confidence going, and now we can maybe uh, uh, really start to see better output. And we, uh, we got some of the highlights from last night's game, so let's go ahead and get the rolling O's and James Toon, our Grizzly game, leads things off here in, I mean, in classic James Toon fashion, just finds fifth gear before anybody else does. Yeah, a great little ball that found him, he, you know, good first touch, and he, he didn't, he kept it simple, just touch to bring it down and a nice little finish so Two great, also great to to get a goal early yeah to really take the wind out of their sail it was great too uh, emotional pregame ceremony as well tombs and the guys honoring Saul with number 24 on the back of their warm-ups uh, Ibrahim gets the second goal of the game there he lets a left foot fly um, great job by him just uh, finding that window and letting it go oh Ibra had been you know it, it probably wasn't up to that point not his best game at that point but you know like a striker gets that one moment and uh you know what a strike he, yeah. he, he hit that one clean only to be outdone by jamie king later we'll get to that in a minute blecking here gets credit for an assist off uh, a sammy gomes uh goal oh blecking had the uh had the night of his career thus far uh, a goal two assists but his delivery was great and so you know sammy you know, took it well the first one keeper made a great save sammy was there for the rebound so you know well done by both the boys german pulls the trigger on this one i felt back to blecking i felt bad and this is him weaving his way through traffic there he probably had the game of his season and how he wasn't the grizzly of the game i realized that till this morning but a big shout out to alex he played really well well whoever was in charge of that we got to really get get their head <laughs> checked but uh, no for alex great little ball and, and the thing about german was he was kind of carrying a bit of a uh, a thigh injury mm. and if you think back to some of those earlier games when we were home back whatever year that was the last time we were home yeah um, he was not really able to put a put a good strike on the ball like that and that one I mean he hit that ball well yeah uh, Toomsy gets his second goal of the game here on a great through ball and just again faster than everybody else on the field and he capitalized on it here good Barry good finish yeah it's you know it, James being James just getting in behind showing off that pace and uh, getting a good strike and uh, that kid's got confidence just rolling right now so and then here's Alex he gets in on the axe King lets one fly and he just finds a Great delivery right into his lap, and uh, freshman doesn't miss there. That's a good sight for him to get his first career college goal. Oh, he had, look at that. I mean, he <laughs> smiles ear to ear. The only problem we ever say is with guys like that, you know, a, a, a back, they get that high. Sometimes they get nosebleeds because they're up too far. They're, they're up too high. high. Like they're that. up way too high. But, you know, Alex took it down, showed confidence, patience, and just, you know, great little finish there. And uh, Alex gets on the action as well. And we, we don't serve that shot justice from Jamie King, but you mentioned it. He hasn't scored since William Carey, and that's a that's a big time shot. We'll, we've got a better angle of that. We'll put on the highlight reel right on the air. I promise you that. But uh, that top shelf finish is, is something else from that far out. The best though is that uh, celebration at the end. It's seven. I got <laughs> one. It, it was more of like relief. Watch where he's walking back. It's yeah. like I needed that. Whew. Yeah. And then instantly pulled him right after that. So. Yeah. And then the uh, eighth and final goal there. Another guy gets his first first clear college goal there, and uh, and Andrew Smith. <laughs> Worst celebration of the year coming up. Yeah, he did everything he could, and that's just pure freshman exuberance. Uh, glad to get that first goal out of the way. But no, it's it, great for Speedy. Um, he's been working hard. It's somebody high five that guy. Seriously, he's <laughs> even running still. <laughs> Run that again, Kyle. That was good. Maybe maybe Zach Muffs off the hook from his two American celebration against William Carey now. Yeah, that's that's the one. You know, Andrew's just excited. He got his first college goal. But else is going. And left foot too. It, great finish. Great God left foot. Everybody else is like, it's eight. <laughs> okay, go on, celebrate. Whatever. The bench was excited for him. I mean, that's great because he's worked hard. He's learning. Um, he's got a great future for us. And so, for him to get his first one now, 
good for him. Yeah, great stuff for the Grizzlies last night. Again, final yeah. score, 8 nothing. Picks up your ninth win of the season here, and now things start to turn over. We get down to the end of the year, and I know Coach May has been grinding on the RPIs and the coaches' mm -hmm. poll. We move up a spot in 12, and we just got to finish our business here to, in, the, in our last game on Saturday. Yeah, we do. We do. And, and, and you got to take care of your own business because if last year was any indication, uh, with the RPI, which dictates who gets into the national tournament, right? There are a lot of upsets, mm -hmm. so you don't want to rely on the fact that the teams above you have to win in order for you to get in. So take care of your own business. But that's a nice. I would rather be in this position than than saying you know we have to win or right. we're relying on just getting a championship to get in. And I, and I want to clarify, make sure we're 100 percent here. Last week we talked, we touched on it a little bit. We're not going to know whether we're an at large before the conference tournament. No. So so from a coaching standpoint. We're approaching it to we've got to win in Iowa in order to get to the national tournament because that's the easy ticket to sell to yeah. tell the guys. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Plus, we didn't come here to you know uh, backdoor our way into a tournament. Let's let's win trophies. I mean, <laughs> that's what <laughs> Dr. Wilson wants is to fill that trophy case and have to expand it. And I don't want to go to a tournament with the mindset that we're just here to show up and make an appearance and let's go home. Yeah. Let's win. I mean, yeah. why are we playing then? So at the end of the day, we want to win, but based on our body of work, we put ourselves in a good position that we potentially, you know, are into the national tournament regardless of what happens. Putting all the numbers and facts and figures aside and getting your team ready, especially emotionally, when I say a week from today, seven days, we're going to board that plane and head to Ashford, Iowa, for that conference tournament, what's the emotion that runs through your head right now? Try not to be emotional. This is a yeah. business trip. You can't get can't get too high, can't get too low. I mean, right now, Coach May and I are trying to finalize all the travel plans. Where are we going to eat? You know, we're trying to find out what time we're going to practice. We don't even know when our game time is yet, right now. <laughs> so that's got to be finalized. So it's it's more of just taking care of the specifics and the logistics of the trip. Emotionally. I mean, this is going to be fun. Uh, you know, we've got some things maybe set up once we get to Chicago. We'll right. talk about that next week in Iowa when yeah. we do the uh, Grizzlies Live from Iowa. There you go. Sport um, But right now, it's all about the preparation for the tournament and what do we need to do. I mean, we've been there before. We've won this thing. So we shouldn't, the emotions shouldn't be too high, shouldn't be too low. Let's just, uh, it's a business trip because, I mean, really, who goes to Iowa for vacation? Absolutely. And it's going to be no mind-boggling cold. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, but everybody's going to have to play in the cold and the wind. Yep. And, you know, I was talking with the Ashford coach. He's got a bunch of Brazilians. They hate it. Ooh, so good. no one's going to like the cold. And, <laughs> and it's true. not going to be an advantage for anyone. So uh, we'll look forward to uh, that trip. And, again, we'll have Grizzlies live for you next week, Thursday, not Wednesday, Thursday, in a special episode from uh, from uh, Ashford. It's actually Clinton, Iowa, but Ashford's hosting, and we'll figure out those details once we get there. Right? That's right. Coach, thanks for coming on the show. Good luck Saturday. we got homecoming going on, too. Homecoming. Big game yep. with Bob Jones. Yep. Big game. Senior day, too, as well. Yeah, crazy. Ian and, and Ian and German's last game at home. Uh, looking forward to that. So, you know, looking forward to getting a big crowd out there to support the boys and uh, ho hopefully going to put on a great performance. Sounds good. We'll have coverage of that 12.45 this Saturday. Senior day, homecoming, whole nine yards. Steve's squad will play uh, Bob Jones at 1 o'clock. We'll take a break. We'll come back. Yeah, he's here. Dominic Martelli, live right here on the Grizzly Digital Network. Scout Day is a great day for us. The uh, you know the scouts come out and it's an opportunity for our guys to really showcase what they can do on the baseball field. You know, Scout Day is uh, what we look forward to all fall. Uh, this is what we train for, it's what we practice for. We get up at six o'clock in the morning. Uh, this is this is it. You know, we have a new squad here, and honestly, we just are lucky enough to even have this opportunity to let the scouts even come see us. You know, you don't get that too much at an NAI uh, program. We got a bunch of guys out today. I think 21, 22, 23 guys um, have, have come out. And it's it's a big deal because to be able to play in front of somebody that um, you're always aspiring to get to, you're always aspiring to play Major League Baseball as, as, a, as a college player. Today's an illustration of how we've continued to build upon the things that we've done in the past with Tyler getting drafted, McGranahan, and, uh, and Fidanza, all three of those guys being able to have an opportunity to play at the next level. You know, had three guys last year get drafted, so I mean, it's just an opportunity to get seen by some of those guys, and then hopefully in the spring you can go out there and perform. I mean, honestly, to even have a second year program, even having people drafted, that's that's just, you don't even hear that anymore. And to have friends and just teammates to even get drafted and say, hey, I have friends in, in, in pro ball, that's just, it's an honor to say as well of them to, to, to even be there. That's just, they, they love it. You know, we lost a lot of guys last year. 
Um, you know, a lot of people are going to think that we're going to take a step back. But uh, honestly, I think the hitters and, and, and those guys, they're, they're on pace. You know, the pitching staff's athletic this year. We've got a bunch of good arms coming out of the bullpen and our starters as well. Uh, it's, it's, it's been a fun fall. It's going to be a fun spring. Uh, honestly, just uh, we're just wrapping up here. We have one more day of practice, and then after that, we're just really cracking down on schoolwork. Um, we have finals coming up and making sure we're all eligible so we can all play and enjoy being at the World Series, hopefully all together next year, this next year. You know, have a nice Thanksgiving break, have a nice Christmas break, and then be ready January 6th for our first day of practice in the spring. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here to Grizzlies Live in Nuke City. I'm Matt Mahoney. We're joined now by head women's soccer coach Dominic Martelli. Matt, how are you doing? I'm doing good, doing good. The weather's starting to change for us a little bit. Do you have any yeah. idea how cold I was on Saturday? Well, see, I think I think everybody should have gotten a gist of how much wind there was when they saw me come in hang gliding. <laughs> uh, you know, when, so for me to hang glide, the wind has to be pretty strong <laughs> to be able to carry me uh, the whole way from my house uh, all the way to the field. I told Nikki in the post game, I said, who should I be jealous of? Her game winning goal or you still being able to wear shorts out there? Well, that's the thing. You know, that 40 degree uh, uh, weather, and, and it's what I'm known for. When we go recruiting, the coaches know, okay, is Dom going to wear shorts? Dom going to have long pants on? And, um, and honestly, it's it's a lot easier for me to wear shorts. Uh, I do it all year long, and um, but 40 degrees is usually my limit. So I'm I'm a little bit questionable now uh, what we're going to do when we head up to Iowa next week. Yeah, I will thank you because if that day hadn't happened, I'd have been miserable next weekend in Iowa. Yeah, we so I feel like Saturday prepared me and maybe yes. prepared the team for what's coming next weekend. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm hoping. Here's my thing. I think when you get cold weather and sun, it's not as cold. So I'm hoping there will be sun and it will be cold weather. We know that for sure. The biggest thing is going to be that wind. Yeah. And, and even though we were in uh, the 40s, it was colder because of the wind. Right. So I don't think we're going to be worried about, you know, how much more colder it's going to be uh, in that sense. But on the biggest thing, it's going to be where are we going to be huh. in, in the day? When right. is it going to happen? What time? We don't know what time the game's happened just up, yet. They haven't so. come up with the ta game times yet. Uh, before we get too far, we've got some highlights from uh, this past Saturday's game. Nikki LaFave gets the goal in the first half, and this is with the wind in our face. Right. And I think we played better soccer the whole entire half. Great um, focusing on, you know, getting the ball to people quicker, getting, getting moving off the ball, getting ourselves in situations where the wind wouldn't influence us. Um, and again, she had a play just before that, the yep. same exact thing. Yep. Took people on. Quite didn't catch it, but boy, did she finish that one in the in the lower corner with her left foot. Her ninth of the season, game-winning goal, huge for us moving forward. And golly, your team is playing well right now. Seven games unbeaten. Is this kind of what you wanted to see happen after that tough schedule early on in the year? Right. I mean, I think again we go back to where we've been all year long. Where we're good enough to win every game. Um, we're good enough to win every game during the game, but we're not doing it enough. An example, Reinhardt. We have that couple minutes of a spell where we didn't capitalize on a few chances and they got a chance to score and we lost the win there. We didn't lose, but we lost that opportunity to win and that's what I want to accomplish on Saturday because we want to not only reward our seniors, but we want to have that win as our last game to give us the momentum going into Iowa. Same thing, big day Saturday. We've got homecoming festivities going on. Senior day going to take place before the game and you've got a great story with a group of, of five girls and Sarah and Erica and Alex and Andrea, the four of them, came from Middle Georgia, and right. now they're going to play Middle Georgia on their senior day right, here at right, GGC. Right, right, and, and again, I think you know we, we can't forget Amanda Dale, who was part of that group Correct. who came last year, or who, who finished up her senior year last year. You have to understand there's really great stories of how we started this athletic department, how we started our teams, how we recruited our players. That whole scenario with all the Middle Georgia kids is a great story. And each and every one of them, I think, and, and, and I'm being selfish, I think really chose the best school for all of them. Absolutely. And not only are we a much better team than probably any of the other schools that they could have ever gone to, but to have them come together and be a core uh, on and off the field for our program um, has been great. And, and, and they've been successful, each and every one of them, and not only contributing in goals and defense and goalkeepers, but just how they are for me and how I can coach them and, and how, how hard they work for us. And, and, and again, they're all doing well. And, you know, the ultimate goal is graduation. I right. mean, that, that's the biggest thing. Right now, the ultimate goal for the five of them <laughs> is to win the conference championship next week. Yep, you had Sarah Murphy and Jacqueline Bailey. We're going to honor them senior day before. You do senior day a little bit differently. It's a nice spectacle. The families are involved. 
What do you what do you get out of senior day? Does coach get his chance to kind of step aside and go, wow, the process these young girls have gone through and where they're at today? Well, I've I've had a tradition. I mean, this is twenty some years now that I've been around seniors and. The eight years at West Point, it's a whole different environment when you're a senior there because the academy takes another level for its seniors. Uh, so soccer is important for them. But in the other programs I've been involved with at Georgia State and here at Georgia Gwinnett, I'm really excited to, to actually have them. Here's what I do as, you know, as far as tradition. Each senior picks a practice or a part of a practice or a type of session that they've enjoyed in their years with wow. me. And I let, and, and we do it. So, if, you know, if, if someone says, you know, hey, Dom, we're going to play World Cup, you know, I'm not going to be excited about it, but we're going to play World Cup. Or if we're going to play, you know, a finishing game or, or a keep away game or, or a fun uh, warm up game, we do it. And it's something that they can contribute uh, to one of their last practices uh, before the end of the regular season. So we're looking forward to Saturday for sure. We're going to play Middle Georgia. Uh, four o'clock kickoff. We'll have coverage for you. Three forty-five, right here on the Grizzly Digital Network. Yeah, I mean, Network. It, it's it's going to be awesome because you know not only will we recognize them during the game, but it's kind of a way with the parents coming in from their their yeah. their individual uh, parents and family and friends. We're going to try to get as many of the other parents involved, and we're going to kind of have a little little get together after the game at the Austin awesome. Cali Suite. So you know, I've always wanted to. You know, you watch TV. You know, Good Morning America. Yeah. Uh, today's show and they always have like a cup of coffee so I don't know what's in it but uh, this is going to be a little drink here are the seniors the, the 2014 class of the cheers. women's soccer team cheers Absolutely. to the seniors of course and what's thank it? you what very is much it? and I'm very honored to be able to have what was it? I think Dr. Pepper okay fair enough yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Dr. Pepper um, or coffee or water <laughs> a little caffeine to get us going today uh, um, something that may not we don't need to get going you know physically because mentally we'll be ready to go a week from today we're going to board that plane and head to Iowa what's uh What's Coach's thought process? Are, are we ready? We, what do we get to do? Like, what, uh, what What are you thinking right now, knowing that's seven days away? Right, right, right. I, you know, I hope the ladies real realize the importance of the tournament. Right. Importance of the conference championship. But also, I hope they actually take in what's happening. They're actually flying to a conference tournament. I can pretty much look at... You know, 75% of the conferences in the United States at every level, mm -hmm. they're busting to their conference tournament. Yep. Whether it's two hours, eight hours, 12 hours, we're flying. I mean, that's, that's you know, rock star type Absolutely. level stuff. And when we can have that, I hope it makes them feel good. Yep. And it makes them understand how important everything is and what they've done and where they're at so that when we land and we have a great training session, when we go to dinner and we're going to have Chicago style pizza because so I like you know, to as much as I love New York pizza, so I like to we're hear. going to have Chicago style pizza. And then we'll get to, to Clinton, Iowa and, and get ourselves prepared. Practice times are going to be finalized. The banquets are already finalized. We're looking at our game time to be finalized. It doesn't matter when it's all going to happen. We're going to prepare and get ourselves laid out in a way where we're going to be, you know, 100 miles an hour ready to go as long as the wind is not 100 miles cool. an hour. We're looking forward to it. Regardless of the weather, the conditions, the time of day, what day we're playing, we're glad to be there. We're glad to uh, to attack it full force. Well, Coach. And, again, it's going to be yeah. online. Yeah. And we'll be able to, to watch we'll, it. We'll have some details on the next week's episode of Grizzlies Live. Make sure we point you guys in the right direction. It'll be oh, on great. Ashford's portal. Cool. We'll, we'll have coverage That'd and highlights on our website. So, well, and, we'll get everybody situated. Mr. Incredible, you know, he came to practice the other day. I saw yeah, that. Yeah, we, may yeah, need yeah. To, we need to pull that photo and bring I, it back. I think, I think we need to, to make sure we get that that uh, motivational quote he gave right. us and, and a little bit of inspiration to get us ready. All right, you ready? I am. All right, we'll take it to a break. We'll come back and have a special guest from our GDC development office about homecoming, the festivities this weekend. You're watching Grizzlies Live on the Grizzly Digital Network. Go Grizzlies. playing the GGC World Series, the Silver Sizzlers and the Yacker Crackers. I'm the team captain of the Silver Sizzlers. I went for my pitcher and catcher because they're really important. They're going to be your top people on the field and then I started picking positions and I also looked at bats. Our draft strategy was make sure we got our infield, third baseman, our second baseman and our shortstop and pit, uh, first baseman. That was our strategy. And then who's been hitting the best? The loser has to move all of our equipment to the new shed, so that's on the line right now. If we lose today, we lose the whole series, and we have to um, do laundry the whole next semester, do um, equipment out, field duties, all that. It's going to be a good battle, but uh, I think I'm coming out on top. 
I'm really excited. It's my last year, so I'm pumped. We've been really working on fielding, and we've been actually like putting people in different positions to see how well it works out. And then we've really been working on hitting because we started off slow hitting, but our bats are actually coming back now. Probably most excited about playing with this team for my last year, being with these girls. Hello, I'm Dr. Darren Wilson, Director of Athletics at Georgia Gwinnett College. Our administrators, coaches, and staff are proud to be one of the newest members in the NAIA. We aim to uphold the NAIA Champions of Character principles by promoting a positive climate for growth while fostering relationships within Georgia Gwinnett College, Lawrenceville, and Gwinnett County. In addition, we embrace our core values for the Grizzly Athletic Department, sportsmanship, leadership, service, responsibility, and pursuing excellence. Our mission is to develop lifelong leaders of character through academic and athletic excellence. Go Grizzlies! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Grizzlies Live at Nuke City. We're joined now by Andrew Schmidt, who's a director of Annual Giving Alumni Relations. That's right. That's a big business card. It's a long business card, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your staff is responsible for putting together the first ever GGC homecoming that's this Saturday, part of the soccer doubleheader. Man, that sounds yeah. pretty cool. It is. We're very excited. It's uh, not every day that you get to be... Uh, on the front lines and really kind of create something from the scrap from scratch. So. And when, how long have you been here? Pardon me. A year and a half. Yeah, same here. Yeah. I haven't been here a whole lot. <laughs> and you just hear all these stories of, you know, you'll have an idea and you'll go to your boss and we don't have a policy on it. So you may have right. to create that policy. And yeah. That comes from Stosh all the way to the top. Who came up with the idea where you went, wow, we've never had a homecoming. Let's try a first one ever. Yeah, we, uh, we kind of tag team with student affairs um, to kind of get things rolling. And uh, then it just kind of snowballed. We, I know we worked with Ned also uh, from your staff, from athletics. And we just kind of said, OK, well, let's make it happen. So. Uh, and unfortunately, Lori has thrown you under the bus here, and you get to represent the development office, but yeah. your whole staff has done a great <laughs> job to put this together. Yes, absolutely. It's, uh, it's a team effort for sure, uh, not just my, you know, my team, but uh, GGC as, as a whole. Well, we're really glad to be a part of it. The athletics can contribute anyway. Obviously, it's going to sit around two soccer games on Saturday, but one of the, the, the cool ideas is, from an athletic standpoint, I don't even know if we have one alumni, much less a group to, to draw from. But the charter class from 06, if I'm not mistaken, 07, yep. is going to be kind of the focal point. And here it is eight years later, and they're going to come back to GGC. Yeah, absolutely. There's 118 original students. So, so the charter students that were the first kind of pioneers of GGC uh, that came before we were even accredited or anything like that. Uh, one building on campus. One building, right? and they, they, they were the, the ones who kind of saw where we would be today, we, we kind of feel like. So yeah, we're going to do a special presentation for them. Uh, so it should be a nice day for them as well. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I look forward to soccer games regardless, but homecoming is always a great time and a great atmosphere. And um, what's more important, the, the results on the field or the weather on a homecoming day? <laughs> well, we're hoping for good results and good weather. I like so, it. The weather yeah. should be good. It checks in right now. It should be all right. It look, I just looked just now before uh, before came on, and it looks like it's going to be about 60, low, low 60s. So and should sunny. be good. And sunny. I'll take so it. it. Absolutely. Um, we'll throw some of the events up on the screen here that's going on. Okay. Um, and, and this starts 9 o'clock in the morning with a, a welcome from our president. Yeah. And then it, it goes uh, right on through a breakfast. And some of this stuff um, our folks need to uh, register for. Yeah, so we have uh, a lot of events planned for the day uh, for alumni. Uh, you can go to ggc.edu slash homecoming. Um, and we'll get uh, you registered for that if you're an alum. Uh, students, uh, we have senior send off also that day, so um, I know it's senior day for the soccer uh, teams as well. So, we're doing a lot of things for seniors, welcoming them to the Alumni Association. Yeah, Colin, go ahead and throw that graphic up there uh, for us. So, uh, with all the stuff that starts at like uh, 9 a.m. in the morning, uh, a little bit to your left there, uh, one more left right there. There she is. That's got uh, all the stuff going on right there, and you can see some of the little stuff that has the asterisks on it is what you got to register for. Go yeah. to ggc.edu to do that. It's right. I mean, it's the first thing to hit you on the on the home page, and there's not even a soccer game mentioned on that, and that takes you all the way to 2:30. Man, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, we. Uh, that's that's all of the alumni stuff. Also, I just point out that that uh, the logo there was created by one of our current students, uh, Katrina. So we we appreciate her. She won the contest for that. 
Um, we'll have t-shirts for seniors. We got a couple of uh, giveaways also for, for senior send off as well. So. And you said the involvement with the student, uh, the, uh, the student affairs office. How can current undergrad GDC students get involved with homecoming? Yeah, absolutely. We encourage all students obviously to come to the games. Uh, we'll have uh, the kind of fall festival atmosphere going on, tailgating kind of things happening. Um, in the field next to the parking deck yeah. and then down by the athletics fields as well. Senior so. send off as well too, I'm telling you, it's going to be a phenomenal atmosphere. We really encourage everybody to come and then <laughs> if you make it to a one o'clock Saturday game, we'd love to have you out for that too. So men's soccer are going to play at one, women are going to be at four o'clock and so Andrew, we're, we're really looking forward to it. We're, we we're glad too. to have you on the show here. and. Um, we can only go up from here, right? Cause, yeah, cause the we, first one. <laughs> we learned in athletics, this, we learned this, to, I say the hard way, but that first year we literally just competed, and yeah. then the next year now we're competing for championships. It's just going to grow and get better from here. Absolutely. We're looking forward to it. We'll have you We'll have you on the broadcast, too, on Saturday as well. You're going to be around a little bit, not I'll too busy? There. I'll be there. I got nothing, I got nothing <laughs> going on. <laughs> Sounds good, Andrew. Thanks for coming by. Thanks, we appreciate Matt. it. That's appreciate Andrew it. Smith. As the, uh, I want to get this right again. Director of Annual <laughs> Giving and Alumni Relations going to put on homecoming, our first ever here at GDC this Saturday. We'll take a break. We'll come back, put a nice little ball on this show. This is Grizzlies Live at Nuke Cedar on the Grizzly Digital Network. Thanks again. Thanks. Appreciate it. medical director of our sports medicine program at Gwinnett Medical Center. So it's just a, a great relationship. Here we have three athletic trainers. We have James, we have Andy and Shira, and they cover all the sports out here. So if any of the athletes out here get injured, uh, you know, they're able to get them in uh, to care faster. Um, they can get them into Dr. Lemongood or with the hospital right around the corner. If there's an emergency, they can get them over there. We're very happy, uh, very happy. We look forward to more sports uh, out here at Georgia Gwinnett College so we can add more athletic trainers. I have 70 on staff right now uh, throughout the different high schools and the professional teams and the recreational teams in the area. And uh, to be able to add more staff out here to help you know, the three athletic trainers out here that you have, that would be wonderful. Again. There we go. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here to Grizzlies Live. Um, big thanks to Andrew for being on the show. We're really looking forward to Saturday. GGC's first ever homecoming. Again, festivities start at 9 a.m. with a welcome from our president. Breakfast follows shortly after that. And again, a list of the full events and to register for our alumni. Go to ggc.edu. That's going to be your ticket for all the excitement this Saturday. Men's soccer will kick off homecoming at 1 o'clock versus Bob Jones at the Grizzly Soccer Complex. We'll have coverage for you starting at 1245. The women will follow suit at 4 o'clock versus Middle Georgia to finish the first ever GGC homecoming. Again, coverage for that, including Senior Day festivities, will be broadcasted at 345. Our Tweet of the Week comes to us from the Milligan Buffaloes account. It's a Milligan College up in Tennessee. And just a unique tweet, a unique picture. We thought we should share that with all of us. As you know, men's soccer had their game canceled at Milligan on Saturday, and they took a picture of their field Saturday afternoon. And so uh, they tweeted out, the 12-year-old uh, inside of me really wishes we could have played Grizzly Athletics today. So that looks like um, a little bit of fun for some people, but that looks like miserable to me. Uh, so uh, fans, you can be our Tweet of the Week by using any of the hashtags you see on our screen there. Again, another programming note. We will have Grizzlies Live next week, but it will be Thursday. Not your regular Wednesday at 12 o'clock. It'll be Thursday from Clinton, Iowa, as Ashford hosts the AI tournament. We'll have all the teams involved, including Coach Deku and Coach Martelli. Really looking forward to uh, that episode. And again, it's on our portal. It's scheduled correctly. Not next Wednesday here at Nukes. It'll be next Thursday in Iowa, so be sure to uh, tune in. We'll get you set up. We'll have the brackets for you. We'll have previews of both contests, and we'll get you squared away. Uh, point in the right direction of where you need to be to watch the game and get coverage and whatnot. So, again, next Thursday in Iowa, we'll have that show for you, Grizzlies Live. Uh, what else are we missing? I, I mean, how many times have I said it? I'm looking forward to Saturday at homecoming. What about you guys? Marissa, thumbs up. Colin, he's still thinking about it. He's going to be coaching too. But, anyways, thumbs up now from Colin. I'm Matt Mahoney with another thumbs up for our entire cast and crew. And that'll do it here for this episode of Grizzlies Live at Nuke City. So long, everybody. I'd like to thank all of our corporate sponsors who have made today's game possible. You can watch this game and previous games by clicking the On Demand tab at the top of the page. In addition, 
you can watch coaches shows and weekly feature stories all on the Grizzly Digital Network by clicking the On Demand tab as well. For the latest information, including game recaps, schedules, and so much more, visit grizzlyathletics.com.